why would dropping an index make a view invalid? And that's a very interesting question. Views and indexes. We have a very large PL SQL code base that was mysteriously having issues with large invalidations recompilations. As in, we all know that when you drop a table, anything that's referring to that table, like PL SQL triggers, etc., get invalidated. But they had views. We tracked it down to when we dropped an index. Some views on the table with the dropped index then became marked invalid and things cascaded from there. Why would dropping an index make a view invalid? And that's a very interesting question. There's actually a friend of mine named Jock who posed this via an email. Funnily enough, it's actually in the documentation. The docs actually say if you drop indexes, then views may become invalid, but doesn't explain why. And so this led to a bit of investigation as to why would dropping an index on a view by dropping an index on a table make a view on that table go invalid? Because the view definition hasn't changed. None of the columns have changed. In reality, we only need to do it on certain views, but we generally don't discriminate. And we can explain why with a little demo. So I'm gonna start very, very simple. We'll go through when it doesn't necessarily have any impact. This is what we, because that's what we would typically expect. I'll create a table called T, a select star from scott.emp. Create an index on the employee number. Let's create a very simple view, a select star from t.emp. And we can see that the views is currently valid. No nothing spectacular there. I drop the index on the view, also on the table, and guess what? The view is still valid. So obviously not all views get marked invalid. Normally, this, you know, this very simple view looks just fine. Now I do a unique index on the employee table. Same thing, create my very simple view, just select star from t.emp. The view is valid as we see. I drop that index and the view is now invalid. So there's obviously a difference between a index on a table from which a view sits on top and a unique index on a table where a view sits on top. And it's only in the unique index case that views on those tables get marked invalid. So we can limit our exploration to that. How do we fix an invalid view? It's just like PL SQL. You do alter view v simple compile and it becomes valid again. If you didn't compile it, the next attempt to access that view would also dynamically recompile it and then you'd be off and running. But as our original questioner said, they had tens of thousands of objects depending on tens of thousands of views and therefore the problem went away, but they had this huge invalidation and recompilation impact just because they dropped an index. Let's explain why unique indexes might have an impact on views by upping the game, so to speak, and making our view a bit more complicated. So I'll create a table called T department as a copy of Scott.department and put a unique index on that as well. Let's do a very classical kind of join on those two tables, employee being a child of department. So my view called V join is all the columns from employee plus the department name. I want to see the department name plus all the employee details as well. The view is valid. That's fine. But here's the key thing. Way back in Oracle 7.3, we introduced the concept of what we call an updatable join view. Views were always updatable if they were just a simple query on a table with no aggregation, etc. just a one-to-one -one simple query on top of a table. In 7.3, that long ago, we improved that functionality by saying, if a view is defined in a certain way, even if it's a join view, you can still update it. And in this case, you can make an assessment that it's fine to update this join view, because I'm going from the employee table. So all the rows here are come from the employee table. I'm doing a look up to the department table. There's a unique index on department number. So I know I'm only going to get one row back. This table is what this view is what we call key preserved, i.e. for one row in the employee table, there will always be one row in the view. As a result, I'm allowed to insert, update, delete any of the employee columns because there's a one-to-one -one mapping back to the employee table. I'm not allowed to tinker with the department name because that points off to a different object and is not key preserved. To prove that you can do this, I can actually update the V join and change the salary column. No problems with that. Let's roll it back. Now I'm gonna drop the unique index on the department table. The view has become invalid. 
Now, the reason it has become invalid is because of this. If I go look at user updatable columns, that is unchanged. It still says all these things are updatable. That seems a bit weird because I can no longer have this guarantee that I'm going to have a one to one mapping between my view and the employee table. There's no unique index on the department table. So it's quite possible that that join might get back multiple rows for a single employee row. We can't guarantee it anymore. The data as we have will be fine, but we can't guarantee it anymore. The reason the view gets marked invalid is because when we dynamically try to access it again, it has to be recompiled. To recompile it goes and refreshes all these columns in user updatable columns. We can see if I try to an update, it says you cannot modify a column which maps to a key preserved table. Just looking at the screen, as you see there, that looks like a, a contradiction. It says, it says, yes, I can, but then no, I can't. That's because these attributes were before the view got marked invalid. The compilation phase has updated these facilities. And now that there is no unique index on the department table, none of the columns are now updatable. This is why we have to set a view to be invalid when you drop a unique index on a dependent table. It's our flag to say, when you come back, we're going to have to recompile the view, update all our updatable columns, no pun intended, to make sure they reflect the current state of play and therefore control things like this correctly. And that's why we do it for unique indexes. Just even the attempt of trying to do that update, recompile the view, it fixed up all these columns and the view has now become valid. So that's why we do it. When you drop a unique index, it might change the updatableness, so to speak, of a join view. But we don't care. We simply say if it's a view that has a unique index sitting underneath it, it gets marked for recompilation no matter what. Keith points here, even though there's now a dependency between that view and that unique index, you won't see it in DBA dependencies. We don't explicitly store a dependency between those two. So be aware of that. If you're going looking for the dependencies between views and new indexes, it won't be there. The dependency is simply not listed. It's only via the compilation of the view that we pick it up.